Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to Behind the Scene, the inner engineering part of the series on this channel, uh, which is getting a lot of love from your side that hey, we really want to understand what's happening behind the scene and how things actually work. And one of the many processes of learning and understanding that is to read blogs. Yes, the blogs of the engineering uh, teams from the Netflix, from the Discord. And today we are going to discuss one such blog to understand what happens and how the technologies are being decided by a company. And it is actually involving something which is latest, cutting edge, which is Flutter. Yes. So in case you don't know, uh, let me walk you through with that what we are about to talk. So I'll walk you through with that. I'll, let me first give you the context of it. So in case you know, these days I'm using this software known as Pieces for Developer. This is a free software, by the way. It actually helps you to save your snippets on, on the device itself. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, just saving snippet on the devices? That's it? That's it? No, there, there's a lot more that this software does. And one of the key essential thing in this is it actually can help you. It has a co-pilot and build which can help you to understand the code, uh, transform your code and even to generate the code. And again, your, your argument would be, I can do all of this in chat GPT. This is exactly where you're wrong. You can do all of this in chat GPT, but there are a lot of proprietary code which you don't want to send to chat GPT. All of the things which are done in the pieces is actually on device. No, it doesn't go anywhere. That is one of the beauty. But uh, the, one of the reasons which fascinates me is this team is using Flutter and Dart all over the places behind the scene. And one of the key proposition offered by this software is it's available on Mac, Windows, Linux, it's on Chrome, it's on Edge, it's on Jupyter Notebook, it's on VS Code, every single place how they were able to achieve this. That's where the flutter comes into the picture. So this video will give you not only just the idea of how to read and study about the engineering side or the deciding factor side of how to pick up a technology, but actually we'll be diving deep into an article. We'll see that how we can actually demystify that article. Of course, we'll be using chat GPT to understand a few of the stuff. And this will be a walkthrough guide. I'll assume that, hey, I am like, third year student or a final year student trying to understand a lot of tech jargon that are happening there. So I'll assume myself, I know nothing in this article. Let's go ahead and dive deep into this. And this is a practice you should follow with other articles as well, like for the Discord and Netflix. I'll walk you through. I'll walk you through. Don't you worry. So let's go there. So if you go on to pieces.app, uh, there is a blog section here directly. And these guys write a pretty amazing blog. So if you just check out the blog, uh, you'll see there are a lot of blogs about, I like their theme as well, by the way. It, it reminds me of the classic black and white era and all of that. One of the article is by Sabo. And in case you don't know, uh, Sabo is actually the founder of this entire project. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, I'll try to bring him on this channel as well for a live quick session. Maybe you can ask him some question. Hey, Sabo, if you're listening, Welcome to the channel, I would love to invite you. So notice here, he actually wrote a blog just a couple of days ago, the Dart and Flutter case study. Mastering on-device AI, that's one of the powerful thing about the pieces, melting away technical debate and crafting the dreams UI. So in case you don't know, the, the building of the UI is one of the challenging thing and not just the UI because you are actually dealing up with a lot of browser nonsense that happens. So how actually they crafted this up. So discover how we mastered on device AI. Uh, this is the most powerful thing because hey, anybody can actually enjoy the APIs given by OpenAI and can just do pretty much everything with the code. But hey, doing everything on device so that your code doesn't leak out. There's a lot of sensitive code, man. You, you cannot just put your code on anybody's server. It's, it's not something that you should be doing. And reduce the technical debate and create the next level UI in the Dart Flutter case study. So this is the case study we want to study. Let's go ahead and click up on this one. And this is where uh, you can actually subscribe to their letter, content, table of content, all of that. But we are more interested, first of all, that's a nice art. Uh, and let's go ahead and study all the details that are there. So uh, please uh, buckle up your belt. Uh, this is going to be a long video, but this should be a long video because we are not here just to see reels or TikTok or just 10, 20 minutes video. This is a case study. This needs to be dived line by line into the detail with a serious note. So if you are somebody who has patience, which is a key thing for becoming a developer, then jump along with me. This is the crucial part. So let's start with that. So in this blog post, we'll explore why Dart and Flutter 
uh, have been chosen as the pivotal technology behind developing pieces for developer. So we can put up a straight fact here at this point that, okay, pieces chose Dart and Flutter entirely for building their tech stack. Uh, that's a fact here. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, we start our journey by understanding how Dart and Flutter's extraordinary uh, foreign function interface capabilities provide a streamlined and efficient method to interact with pre-compiled Rust bi binaries to deliver a highly responsive and enriching experience. Okay, before you understand this line, first and foremost, you need to understand what is this foreign function interface capabilities. Now, this is something which actually a lot of people don't understand and don't realize. So obviously you'll see and will come onto these pictures as well. Copy this, go on to chat GPT and just paste it up here. Uh, are we here? Uh, probably not. Let's just hit a refresh. Okay, what happened to you? Okay, we'll be using ChatGPT4. Feel free to use 3 as well. I have the paid version, happened to be there. Uh, so I'll be actually putting up this. Now just writing this, obviously this understand the context of it. And notice here, foreign function interface is a technique used in programming that allows the code written in one language to call the code uh, written in another language. So it's almost like an API interface, but what it's basically is, it allows you to use the uh, use the things at the runtime as well. It's particularly useful when you have existing libraries or system calls written in C++, which in, in the case of uh, the pieces, it's in Rust, and want to use libraries or APIs in other languages such as Python, Lua, Rust, and all of that. So that's the whole idea behind uh, having this one. So uh, now that you understand the foreign function interface, what does it mean by this capability of interacting between different languages and the different system calls is actually responsible for streamlining an efficient method to interact with pre-compiled Rust binaries to deliver highly responsive and enriched app experience. So every single time, no matter on the top interface, wherever the languages are, uh, mostly it's, uh, fun it's uh, Dart and Flutter, which is allowing them to actually, the baseline of their code, the base code is now we can establish a fact that it's in the Rust, which is helping them to talk all the time. And Rust is all, you know, it's, it's really fast, ridiculous fast. Uh, we then dive into the versatility, uh, vers vers versatility. <laughs> Oh man, can't even speak. Uh, of Dart and Flutter across multiple platform and their robust uh, synergies with the web technologies. Okay, I get that. Uh, which enable the creation of highly performance desktop app that fits snugly into the diverse workflow. Uh, so this is one of the key features that you don't have to worry too much about the platforms and all of that. So hey, that's that's great strategy there. As we navigate through the post, we'll discover how Dart has simplified complex development process reduced the technical debate and fostered a unified and efficient development team. So all the decisions were taken not based on the hype of the language, like, hey, JavaScript is too cool, whole Rust is too cool. It was based on how can we make sure that our team is united, is not facing any challenges, and we are able to achieve that goal. That's pretty cool. I think that's a great, great uh, factors have been given. We will also address the relief that Dart and Flutter offered from the chaos of managing the browser support by abstracting ways, uh, abstracting away complexity and enhancing overall efficiency. This whole statement, just this line, managing browser support and abstraction, there are even million dollars of companies uh, stated on top of fact that, hey, we will actually help you to navigate somehow the browser nonsense that happens. Browser stack is one of such company, uh, but again, uh, this was one of the major uh, thing. Towards at the end of the Dart and Flutter case study, we focus on Flutter's exquisite uh, control over rendering. That's one of the cool thing about the Flutter, allowing for the creation of visually stunning, high quality user interface. Since Flutter is not actually dependent on just the browser itself, uh, it actually honestly provides you so much of capabilities uh, to have the UI the way you want it to be. No browser nonsense, it's already good, okay. So quick outline for the Dart and Flutter case study. First of all, it's an introduction. Then harnessing the power of FFI, we just studied that. That's why I say whenever you don't understand any keyword or any technical jargon, don't wait. Just go on to Google or ChatGPT, understand that so that you can understand rest of the article or the book wherever you are studying in a much better and reliable manner. Then in the third section, it talks about multi-platform uh, flexibility and performance. Uh, then it talks about the streamlining the development process. Pretty interesting one. I'm pr pretty excited about this part. 
uh, overcoming the browser support chaos. <laughs> I love that. And gaining control over rendering with the Flutter. And finally, the conclusion. So this will be uh, your entire outline, what they actually mentioned. So pretty good, nicely condensed article. If I just want to study that, hey, I have done my research about choosing the platform. I just want to see that how you gain the control over the rendering. So you can study that part only. Okay, uh, I'm not interested in just the one-liners of it. I'm interested in jumping a dive, diving into this one. In the intricate dance of software development, <laughs> ah, I like that, uh, we often find ourselves uh, confronted with the uh, labyrinth of choices. Yes, that's one of the issues. Uh, from the nitty-gritty of the syntax to a ma macro macrocosm. What does that even mean? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> what, what does that even mean? Uh, I'll just look it up. And it says, uh, the whole of complex structure, especially the word of universe. Cool. That's how you actually improve your vocabulary. Just click there, understand the syntax of it. Okay, of architectural frameworks, uh, every decision shapes uh, the end product and influence how it interacts with its users. The question then arises, why amongst the ocean of the choices did, did we gravitate to Dart and Flutter to build pieces? Very well played. I like that. I like that. How you have actually put up this. Well, the answer isn't simple, you might think. It's a mix of practicality, performance, and a touch of the software development magic that's hard to put in the word. Today, I'm excited to unpack one of those core cool reasons and blah, blah, stuff. I'll, I'll not read that one. Uh, again, the same word is coming up here. So I'm more interested in the magic of Dart and FFI, why they rock uh, our developer socks. Socks. I like that socks. Okay, uh, our journey with pieces for developer begin with a lofty, uh, ambitious goal. We dreamt of creating a universal desktop app for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So when you're building a software product, it's actually a common thing to be more ambitious. That whenever we are building even a web application or web product, we are very ambitious that we want to make this product available on um, Safari, on Chrome, on the Arc browser, <laughs> why not? And also on to... Uh, Android systems, iOS system, iPad. It's a very, very challenging world. It's not easy to do that. A tool that would allow developers to save all type of resources through their workflow. That's that's my keyword, workflow. But we didn't just want to stop at saving resources. Oh, no. We aim to make each save resource a mini power pack of useful information. Think tags, titles, descriptions, suggested search, related people, external documentation, links, and so much more. Yeah, that's what the pieces does. To bring this uh, dream to life, we need to powerhouse to drive the feature. We found our answer in our on-device uh, micro models. This is where Dart's brilliant FFI programming capabilities came into the picture. I think there is a nice link as well. Uh, you can read about more onto this. So probably there's a nice article here that if you want to deep dive into the FFI programming, probably we'll do another video on that uh, very soon. So uh, put a comment in the section, in the comment section that, hey, we want to understand this piece more. FFI is the golden ticket that led Dart's converse directly with our compiled Rust binaries. Now, if that sounds a bit uh, techno babble, uh, stick with me. I promise it's simpler than it sounds. Okay, the awe of Dart's FFI magic. Imagine you're watching a sci-fi sci show and there's a universal translator that allows different species uh, from across the galaxies to communicate seamlessly. That's pretty much what FFI does in the development world. It allows different languages to talk to each other, bridging the gap between them. I should have waited for him to actually explain it, but I think ChatGPT does a decent job, but I think he does it way better than this. So where we say that FFI is a golden ticket, it's because it allows us to tap into raw power of pre-compiled Rust binaries right from the Dart code base. This means we can have a super efficient conduit uh, for our on-device micro models leading to a streamlined data enhancement rich process. Okay, so probably they are compiling their binaries into Rust and you also want to talk to your models to the Rust as well so that whatever the code compilation or whatever the on-device AI that you want to actually prepare your model or want to inject there, uh, we need a talkative capability there. Okay, uh, skipping this part, uh, the result, all the heavy lift is done locally, right on the user's device. Dart's exceptional FFI capability allows us to extract maximum performance from our Rust code without losing the benefit of Dart and Flutter high-level, easy-to-use framework. Okay, so the brain is Rust, but the interface is Dart. Just like uh, what happens exactly when you run your 
uh, let's just say your fetch API calls through the Node.js because Node.js under the hood, it's libuv, but you write all of your code in JavaScript. Uh, so under the hood, it's all C++. So it's super fast and fetch does all of that. So similar to that, what they're doing is under the hood, it's all Rust, which is doing all the heavy lifting, but the interface which is talking to it, it's Dart and Flutter to understand it much more easier way. Okay. Okay, so move, moving on. So what does this all tech wizardry mean? Quite simple, you get faster, more efficient and incredible responsive experience with pieces for developers. Uh, you save resources more instantaneously, supercharged with additional metadata, providing you with a richer informative experience. That's what user want. User doesn't care you make it in Rust or C++ or LiveUV. He wants fast experience and that's what you are doing. Okay, zooming out, Dart and Flutter all around flexibility. Now let's take a step back and look at the big picture. In the ever-evolving landscape, landscape of development, we are often faced with building one application to suit multiple platforms. Our app must uh, crisscross through various web native tools and work with latest hardware advancement. It's a symphony of complexity. <laughs> I like the word here, symphony. It's a symphony of complexities and to create pieces for developers, we needed a partner that could keep up with these demands. Pretty cool. Enter the Dart and Flutter, the dynamic duo that provide to be perfect partner in this uh, development tango across Mac, Windows, Linux, harmonizing with your IDs, browser, collaborative environment. So yeah, it, it's a pretty good case study to understand that how is a small team of engineers were able to build up a product which is available almost everywhere. That, that's a pretty cool case study. A tool for all trade and platforms. Our vision for pieces wasn't confined confined to just bring an app, we wanted to be a tool between the tools. A tool that not only acted as a repository for your workflow, but also as a dynamic companion. We wanted it to be seamless integration with ID in browser, even tap into a collaborative ecosystem. I think I'm, I'm not going to read that. Web meets Flutter, Flutter meets web. Okay. The magic of the Dart and Flutter doesn't stop at native platform. One of the aspects I absolutely love about Dart Flutter is how beautifully they work with existing web technologies. The Dart to JavaScript compiler, uh, D2JS, enables our Flutter app to integrate seamlessly with the web. Pretty cool. Now that you know one more thing, that there is a compiler which can convert your Dart code to JavaScript. That's pretty cool, actually. And not just compatibility, Dart to JS is almost 50% more performant than handwritten JavaScript. JavaScript? Handwritten JavaScript? Come on, man. Uh, thanks to its use of Google's Closure compiler uh, behind the scene. This... This portion should be bookmarked and should be read in more depth to understand that what this Dart to JS and that could be a cool video. And that's how I come up with more cool videos, which actually helps you to explore something which was not explored on the internet. So that's how I came up, come up usually with the new videos and all the time and all that. So I, I'll definitely jump onto that. I'll probably do a bookmark on that, that, hey, I'll, I'll just highlight this. I'll uh, come back later. I'll say come back later. And I'll just say, video note so this probably can be a really nice video all right so i'll just hit an enter there we go so i'll i'll probably come back onto this one later okay uh built a powerful cli and modular aot uh, binaries with the dart as a developer we often find ourselves building a dart, dart command line interface cli tools this is another area where dart truly shines dart excels when it comes to creating a modular ahead of time binaries uh, that's also a keyword again if you really want to understand more of it I'm pretty familiar with that, but if you are not, just click up here, read it more. If you wish, I can make a small reel about it that, hey, what is AOT ahead of time binaries, uh, which can easily be called as CLIs. The ability is game changer in the tooling world, giving developers like us the flexibility to create powerful performance optimized tools. Cool. In essence, the power of flexibility of this Dart Flutter example empowered us to deliver a desktop application. So this is, again, a summarize. Okay, so moving on, ah, save code snippets. Ah, nah. uh, streamlining the workflow with the Dart and Flutter. Okay, the world of modern web developer is like a brilliant lit uh, carousal, rotating through a, a dizzying area of ever-evolving technologies and framework, from bundling options like Webpack, ESBuild, Rollup to a myriad of JavaScript frameworks and variations like JS, TS, JSX, TSX. We, we, we use a ton of them, man. Uh, these days we use like a whole lot of overwhelming stuff. Uh, as vibrant in this field, the multitude of choices present a challenging landscape to navigate. Staying abreast of these rapid changes can often feel daunting. 
And let's not get even started with a dreaded T word, <laughs> technical debate. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll not go into that T-shaped of the person, whatnot. There's there's too much of the too much of the T word there. Okay, uh, just a uh, boogeyman uh, lurks in the darkness. Technical debate is lurking threat. Man, how do you write all of this, man? <laughs> this this is I'm not even feeling that I'm reading a technical article. I've read a lot of them from a lot of they are dried don't have any sense of humor, don't even connect with me, still have to painfully sit there and read this. This is more engaging, man. All these boogeymans and lurking dark threats. Oh, man, I like that. Okay, uh, moving further. A unified language for streamlined development with Dart. So I'll be skipping that part because I'm quite aware of that, that now you will be talking about FFI, FFI and all of that. So I'm pretty aware of that. I don't need to read it. But if you wish, you can go ahead and read more about the Dart capabilities, TypeScript and whatnot. Uh, this is where I'm interested, dodging the browser support and chaos with Dart. So this is something which I think everybody should understand. This deserves to own its separate video. Managing browser support for web application is uh, akin to challenging juggling act. It is. Polyfills, vendor prefixes, performance improvement, multi-threading, the variety of frameworks for bringing native capabilities to web app. All of these are balls to juggle with the potential to trip up the performance of the web application if not handled correctly. Dart and Flutter, however, gracefully dodge this chaos. That's already a thing which should really impress you and sh you should be really doing more digging into this one. Flutter and Dart uh, brilliantly abstract away a lot of complexity, enabling developers to focus on building beautiful functional app rather than tangling uh, with the intricacies of browser support. Uh, see, if you have noticed uh, the pieces, if you have any time installed it, it doesn't run in your browser. It also doesn't run in your... Electron app, which is almost, again, a browser which is opened up as an app, so it doesn't do any of that. It actually loads up its own capabilities. And I'm thinking here, if the same approach is being used in some browser, uh, not the browser, the IDEs, like there would there might be an IDE which actually uses the same approach, does everything like that, and fires up that IDE, almost like VS Code, in that kind of a browser OS. Not browser OS, the Flutter, Flutter Dart OS. That would be way more faster, way more efficient. It can be built in just the Rust. Interface could be in the Flutter Dart. And we can also support the existing, all the plugins and snippets there. Again, chain of thought. That's how you actually come up with a lot of ideas. Okay, when considering framework to bring native capabilities to web, Dart and Flutter provides a singular robust solution, uh, decision helping managing technical debates, blah, blah, stuff. Uh, I'm not interested in that. Uh, this is also interesting, pixel perfection. Building user interface is an art, and each pixel and each element contributing to overall user experience. Agree there. Agree there. Uh, Flutter offers an unraveled uh, level of control over rendering. In case a lot of people don't know, rendering is in itself an art. I recently did an engineering video in our engineering where I showed you how browser actually works, and there I showed you more about how everything is painted in the browser. It is so much of a complicated process, the DOM, the CSS ARM, uh, then the rendering tree, then the calculation. It, it's a mess, man, it's not easy. Uh, with Flutter, we are not just laying out our DOM elements, I told you. Uh, we are painting pixels. This perspective unlocks powerful animations, stunning UI element, and more uh, features typically demanding uh, modern CSS and clever DOM structures. The reason why they are mentioning is clever DOM structure because you really want to manipulate your DOM on the clicks and the buttons and the hovers. Not an easy way. Not an easy thing. Entire React was built on top of this. Uh, but, but Flutter power doesn't stop at rendering. It extends to testing and developer tooling. Ensuring our application is top-notch quality, bug-free and ready for production. Seems like this man is a big fan of a Flutter or eventually I've become a fan of Flutter and the Dart. Uh, Flutter gives us the a palette to paint our vision, test our creation, and bring the masterpiece to the life quickly. Ah, oh, that's... I would I would probably pick this out and put this into some blog article or something that how does the founder of the pieces define this? This is like a typical founder quote. <laughs> I like that, man. Uh, choosing Flutter, empowering us uh, to control and elevate our development process to new heights. It's not just about bundling an app, uh, but creating an experience. See, what I've noticed is when your application, your company, your ed tech, your payment gateway, whatever that is, when they start about thinking about creating an experience, that's where you change the entire game, man. Apple to this date is Apple because they never talk about, hey, we have 8 GB RAM or 10 GB RAM. This is 
it will give you an experience, which it does. It does. It delivers the experience. And the moment you think, start thinking about your business as delivering the experience, that's where it shows that you are not, not somebody who is just creating the things for the first time. You are a veteran. Okay, wrapping up the Dart and Flutter case study. As we wrap up the extraordinary our Dart Flutter roles in building pieces, it's reflect on the key insight we have gleaned. Ah, nice word there, man. And so long, I have never never seen this word <laughs> for long. I probably see that in a few years ago in some books or something. <laughs> nice to see that. Uh, you write really nicely, man. Uh, when we unveiled how Dart and Flutter foreign uh, function interface, we learned this new word here. I think many of you. Uh, capabilities supercharge our data enrichment process, giving us high performance at efficient app. We also witnessed the pair's adaptability, effortlessly bridging gaps across multiple platforms. We explored Dart's role in streaming our development process, curbing technical debate, debt, and fostering a unified uh, team. Dart and Flutter effective management of browser support complexity also came to light, adding the efficient gains. Finally, we celebrated Flutter, Flutter's control over rendering that allows the creation of visual stunning. Okay, uh, there's a lot more here as well. You can go ahead and read more about them, but I think this is a fantastic article. So a couple of things. Obviously, when you buy a new book, it's not about every page will give you new information. A lot of this information, I was aware of it. A lot of information, you might be aware of it, but where the things actually shine is let's go up at the top. First of all, a lot of people didn't knew about this uh, foreign function capability. So that's the one additional thing you learn. Whenever in an entire book or a blog post you learn one new thing, that's it. The job is done. I also learned one new additional English word. So that is already uh, great. Uh, the article is written. This also shows me that how an article could be referencing a lot of things from movies and 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 probably uh, myths, you can say, and all of these things, which actually helps user to be streamlined with you, connect with you more. So that's one thing I've learned here. Also, uh, a lot of people might have learned here and there more things about what Flutter is, how it can provide you. So this actually brings a question. How does Flutter gives you more rendering capabilities? How does Flutter gives you more capabilities to paint an entire picture on the screen? Uh, something worth researching that will make you a better developer. And on top of this, I found this whole thing, Dart to JS, which I will 100% be exploring more. These days, I'm exploring more onto the Flutter side. So this is something which makes me that, hey, I should be reading, learning more about it. Uh, I'll be diving deep into this to see that, hey, what is this? How does it work? More onto this one. So again, every single article that you'll be reading is something that should give you something. And when you read these articles from little bit offbeat destination because I know you read on the hash node, dev2, uh, probably medium as well. They're good, but sometimes these professional blogs on the company website itself, they are a great resource and probably worth an entire boot camp of 30 days if you just read them one. I'll definitely include more such articles. If you wish, just let me know in the comment section. I'll definitely 100% include them in the behind the scene engineering. They are not going to be fascinating. They'll be a little boring, but you'll be learning a lot of things along with me. That's the real engineering. It's not always fascinating, but this is something which you should be excited as an engineer. And again, a big shout out to Savo for writing this amazing article. I would definitely love to invite him over a live stream here on the channel to understand more about on device AI, how he was able to do it, how he built this such an amazing product and probably some insight for all of us. So, hey, welcome, man. I'm waiting just for your call or message or something. Drop me up. I would love to call you up here. Uh, but this is all. This is another video in understanding the inner engineering of uh, some of the products as well. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have enjoyed this, a subscribe would be really, really nice. But if not, that's cool as well. <laughs> Keep on hanging up. I'll be definitely bringing more such videos. Thank you so much. And let's catch up in another such video.